Good afternoon. Thank you all for coming. Uh, this has been a, a pretty busy uh, day. It's been very, uh, very fluid situation that we've had. Um, this morning at 8.49 a.m., uh, we received a call from one of the deputy solicitors um, that was on the phone with a victim who is named uh, Brandy Ward. She's age 33 from Somerville. She stated that her husband, Daniel Brooks Ward, age 34, was in the vehicle with her and had a, uh, a weapon on her, uh, a firearm. Mr. Ward um, was due in court this morning on a uh, bond revocation hearing due to a violation of protection order through the circuit court here in Berkeley County. Uh, the victim, Miss Ward, was transferred over to 911 where she remained on the phone while she and the suspect were in the vehicle. She was able to give the dispatcher uh, information about the vehicle and, and what direction they were headed in. That information was broadcast to our deputies. Uh, at approximately 9:12 a.m., one of our uh, Berkeley County Sheriff's deputies spotted the vehicle driven by Daniel Ward, and Brandy Ward was a passenger. Uh, he was spotted on 176 in the Lebanon community, uh, which ultimately would lead you to Holly Hill. The deputies initiated a traffic stop based on the information that uh, Miss Ward was being uh, uh, kidnapped and held at gunpoint. Uh, the suspect, Mr. Ward, refused to stop. The chase went into Orangeburg County, uh, onto 95, up 95 into Clarendon County, and back down 95 back into Orangeburg County where the suspect, uh, Daniel Ward, uh, was involved in several different traffic accidents. His vehicle ended up in the median. Uh, as deputies uh, were approaching, he fired several shots at the sheriff's deputies. Uh, they did return fire, uh, striking Mr. Ward. He was uh, airlifted to Palmetto uh, Regional Hospital in Columbia. I do not know the condition of him at this point. I'll tell you that there were multiple agencies involved in this, in this chase that lasted for about an hour. I'm asking you to keep in mind that we had a suspect that was armed. He has a history of domestic violence. He's been arrested by us several times. Uh, he was supposed to be in court this morning. He was armed, considered dangerous, and he had uh, his wife at gunpoint. He made several statements to his wife that he was going to kill himself or it was going to be uh, suicide by cop. Uh, with that information, we have asked uh, SLED to come in and investigate the shooting. Uh, again, multiple agencies were involved. I'll tell you that three Berkeley County Sheriff's deputies were involved in the actual shooting and one Clarendon County Deputy Sheriff was involved in the shooting. Uh, my deputies have been placed on paid administrative leave pending the outcome of the investigation. Uh, any information related to the other agencies that were involved will have to come from those agencies. Uh, the chase, as you know, ended in Orangeburg County. Sheriff Leroy Ravenel will be available to you uh, at his office for any uh, information, the same with uh, Clarendon County Sheriff Randy Garrett. Uh, they'll be releasing their own information as, as how this whole incident relates to, to their agency. I'll, I'll also tell you that SLED agents are, are still processing the, the, the scene and uh, also interviewing witnesses. Keep in mind, heavy traffic on 95, a lot of people saw what was going on and uh, it was a lot of traffic issues, as, 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 as I know most of you are already aware of. Um, at this point, uh, SLED is going to be charging uh, Daniel Brooks Ward with four counts of attempted murder. The Berkeley County Sheriff's Office is obtaining warrants uh, for Mr. Ward for kidnapping, violation of a protection order, possession of a firearm during a, a commission of a violent crime, 
and failure to stop for blue lights. That's that's what we know right now that we're that we're charging him with. Um, we have uh, deputies that are at the Palmetto Richland Hospital uh, standing by uh, with the suspect. And uh, I'll tell you that we have had several encounters with Mr. Ward, and he does have um, a, a lengthy criminal history. He has been charged with kidnapping before. We're trying to determine what the outcome of that situation was um, as we speak. Again, I, I know you have a lot of questions. Uh, this this thing is, is uh, keep in mind when we, we move into several different jurisdictions like that, there's a lot of different you know, information going around. We're just, we're trying to uh, assist SLED with the information that they need and, and help them with the investigation as well as the other agencies that are involved. I'm thankful that none of our deputies were injured and the victim was not injured in this case. That's really, uh, it's really remarkable, y'all, that, that, you know, a chase lasts an, uh, almost an hour through multiple jurisdictions and having uh, the amount of traffic that some, I think some of you saw and involved in that kind of chase, especially with, uh, with a firearm involved. So we're thankful that our officers, our deputies are okay. And uh, we just, we look forward to, uh, to this, this investigation moving forward. Sure. How was she able to make that call with her big old gun there? I'm told she had her cell phone and she was talking on it um, actually when the suspect uh, came to her. We're still trying to determine. There, there's some information that he may have been hiding in the trunk of the car and came in through the back seat while she was on the phone. Uh, at times during the chase, I'm told that she lost uh, cell service and, and you know, there was times where we did not know what was going on inside that vehicle except what the deputies could visually see. So she was not being held at that point when she made a call for the person? She was not at that point, but while on the phone, on the phone, he apparently either came to the vehicle or was already hiding inside the vehicle. So she was driving the vehicle? At one point she was initially, yes. So the initial call to 911 I'm, I'm sorry. I'm just trying to figure she, out. What she the was on the phone was. talking with the solicitor's office about the revocation hearing that was supposed to happen when all of that transpired. So this call came after he was already supposed to be at that hearing. Is that correct? I'm not exactly sure of the time frame of that. Um, I just know that she was talking with them, uh, apparently trying to prepare for whatever the outcome of that hearing was to bring. I don't know the times of it. And again, I, I know you have a lot of questions. I'll try to answer everything I can for you. There's some things that I just don't know at this point. So where did the chase start, you said, on 176 and what community? Lebanon. Can you spell that community? L-E-B-A-N-O-N. Yeah, L-E, yeah. And that's Bill's first Yes, yes. Okay. Sheriff, right. Sheriff, let me just clarify. So the call comes in about this hearing. It turns violent. She's transferred to 911, and then the chase ensues. Correct? No. No, I think it was almost immediately when she was on the phone with the with the solicitor's office. Again, okay. we're 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 yeah. real early. I'm trying to determine the uh, time frame of all of that. It appears she was initially on the phone with the solicitor's office when the suspect appeared. And the solicitor called 911. And the I solicitor see. called 911 also. Okay. So he was going for a bond revocation for, what was the charge again? A violation of an order of protection. And I don't have a lot of details on that as of yet. We're, listen, we're, we're, we're combing through, you know, the reports and different information that we have on him. Again, do we know if it was against his wife? Is that yes. Okay. Yeah. Did she receive any injuries at all? Other than, of course, a traumatic experience, which is, you know, devastating. She, she did not. Um, that I'm aware of, and she's uh, cooperating and talking with uh, sled agents. Have you, have you spoken to your deputies? How are they doing? I have. I've spoken to them, um, and they, you know, they're upset about the, you know, what's happened, how it all transpired. I mean, you know, they don't come to work thinking about getting in these type of situations. 
but as I've said, you know, we live in a more violent society, and uh, it just seems that these things, these things keep keep happening. And uh, you know, to to turn and shoot at law enforcement while holding someone uh, hostage or kidnap them, you know, we see what the outcome is. And you say he was involved in some. During this there was some minor accidents. I'm told uh, during the chase, he, he may have hit a couple of different vehicles, but uh, I don't think anybody was injured in those. He fired first, Sheriff? Yes, sir. Do and we know where? Again, uh, just to clarify, make sure we get right. Uh, did the deputy ever shoot at the vehicle while it was moving? No. Okay. Not that I'm aware of. That he came out I'm, I'm not aware that he came out. All I know is that he was. Uh, shooting at the deputies as they were approaching the vehicle. Uh, keep in mind, the main focus was try to rescue the kidnapped victim, get her out of that situation, and that's what they were trying to do. And he started shooting at them. And at that point, had he wrecked or just stopped? He had wrecked into the median there on 95. And the information that he was to commit suicide or want to be shot by police officers, that came from the wife on the 911 call? Yes, I believe so. Now, do you know how many shots he fired and how many shots he did? I, I don't at this point. Um, again, if any of y'all were out there to see this, you know, you got the traffic, it's pretty chaotic. Um, you know, we're leaving that part to the sled agents. Um, I, I don't know at this point. Did you say four deputies officers were struck or it just involved? Involved. What do you have to say about the timing of her call to the prosecutor at the time, just by chance? Uh, you know, it's one of those things that, you know, you think somebody was looking out for, that she was able to do that, that she was on the phone with somebody when it occurred, because it could have uh, ended differently. Um, I don't understand how or why he allowed her to continue on the phone. Um, I don't know all that transpired in the vehicle. I won't know for some time. But... Uh, you know, we're thankful that she was able to, to call us and get that information to us quickly and that we had deputies in the area that, that were able to respond. And this hearing was supposed to be in Berkeley County? Yes. And you said none of your deputies were struck at all? No. You may have already said this. Do we know what he was on bond for at the time? I don't know all the details. All I know is it was, uh, it was an order of protection that was issued because of an ongoing domestic situation. He had violated the, the rules of that order from a judge and a uh, circuit court judge had issued uh, actually a bench warrant this morning for him um, for those violations and failure to appear. Did your call with the solicitor have anything to do with that? Maybe you said why was she on the phone with the solicitor? I, I think it did. I, you know, I'm just speculating. I don't know that. I haven't talked to her, um, uh, uh, you know, directly about it. I think it probably did. In several several counties, at least an hour, do you want to talk about just like the scope of this chase and how much of a moonshot it is for it to end successfully like this? How much of it is? How much of a moonshot it is for this to end? This well, you know, y'all listen. Y'all seen these things all over the state, and uh, you know, we train for these things. We prepare for them as best we can. And I think our deputies did very well under the circumstances. You, you know, you're, you're, you're chasing someone that's, that's wanted, that's dangerous, that's armed, that has uh, uh, that's kidnapped someone, and who knows what harm they're going to do to them. And it's our focus and our, our mission is to try to uh, intercept that and stop it from happening. And it, it's not always, uh, you know, it's not always nice. It, and I would say the deputies handled themselves very well from, from what I've seen so far. And I haven't looked at everything. But going into multiple counties and uh, trying to communicate with other uh, law enforcement agencies and in and, and different jurisdictions is tough. And, uh, but it, it, you know, overall the focus was to make sure Miss Ward was safe. Is this a pretty nice ending then to the chase? I, I was, you know, we don't like to see these things end in, in gunfire, but uh, we did not make that choice. Um, 
unless the ward made that choice. And we just have to deal with it. And then how many accidents did Mr. Ward cause when he was in several? Is there? I, I don't have a number. Greater or less than 10? I, I, I don't think it was 10. It may have been two or three. Sheriff, can you go over the charges again, please? Yes. Four counts of attempted murder, one count of kidnapping, one count of violation of a protection order, one count of possession of a farm during the commission of a violent crime, and one count of failure to stop for blue lights. There was also there is also a uh, bench warrant for failure to appear from the circuit court here in Berkeley County that was issued this morning. And you said the chase started in Berkeley County, went to Orangeburg, then Clarendon, then back to Orangeburg. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Have we calculated how many miles this <laughs> I have not. Um, if you know anything about the area, going up that way is, is predominantly rural. And until you get to Santee or get to 95, I don't know how far up 95 um, they went. Ultimately, they ended up back in into um, Orangeburg County. Which agency actually was able to detain um, Mr. Ward? I know he was injured, but I mean, what? How did he come into custody exactly? Well, our our deputies obviously were were right there um, when the uh, when the crash occurred in the median, and I think it was a, a team effort from all the agencies involved that, that came upon, you know, the, where he stopped. At this point, do you know where he was shot? Like, what part of his body? I don't know. I really don't. Looking at his uh, record there, how far back did the domestic complaints go? Uh, and this is very early on. We've had, I think, uh, about 12 contacts with uh, Mr. Ward. I don't know the details of any of those yet um, over the last three or four months. And, uh, you know, it's one of those things that we're, we're seeing in society, you know, domestic violence escalating. He was also involved in a major manhunt last year, almost exactly a year ago. I was told that, yes. He was hiding in the woods, is that right? Yes. So he's been on your radar for quite some time. Yes. He was also arrested during our recent sweep, um, crime sweep, and was out on bond. Do you know, has you had any other, prior to this issue, have you had any other, for this protective order, had he, um, what am I trying to say? He broken his protective, violated, thank you, protective order prior to this that you know of? Just, just from what I've seen, um, there has been some other violations of protection order. But again, I, I, I can't go into any details because I just don't know. We just haven't had a chance to go through everything. About uh, what period of time from the time of the call till, till finally uh, the incident ended? Uh, I think it was just over an hour. I got a live shot of four, excuse me, I grabbed my stuff. So yes, sorry. sir. Thanks, sir. Oh, and we will be uh, getting incident reports for you, um, hopefully to release those by close of business tomorrow. Again, I'm asking for your patience. There's not a lot of uh, things that, that, that I can give you based on SLED taking the investigation. Um, I know y'all are interested in video and probably the 911 calls and all those things. I have no problem releasing that to you uh, as long as SLED is, is okay with it. Sure. Okay. okay. We're going right outside. We've got 10 minutes. <laughs>